Thank you for hopping on Zoom with me to have a little sure. COVID conversation. Um, yeah. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the end of the season, the abrupt ending, you know, all the feelings that can come with that. But first, I also, I want to talk about the out of the ordinary season as well. And I kind of want to get your perspective. Um, okay. you, came, you came in from Stockton as a video yep. player, you know, started the season as the assistant coach. Uh, changes were made in season and you were the interim head coach. Um, out of the ordinary is, you know, doesn't even really do it justice. You know, what was your perspective, if you can even really summarize it? Oh, we've actually started the interview here. Like, we're going right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought that we were just kind of, like, going through it. My bad. Um, <laughs> I thought you were giving me a synopsis of what was to come. But, all righty. We're rolling. <laughs> we're live. We're rolling. Um, no, I mean, unconventional is probably the best word to use. Um, in terms of this season, it was definitely – the start of the year was a learning experience and it was kind of getting my feet back under me in terms of like being behind a bench and that sort of thing and how that dynamic worked um, just in terms of player interaction, so on and so forth. So overall, I think it was, it was really good for us. Um, you know, it was, it was a positive thing for me to get back there. Um, coming from Stockton, I felt like it was, it created a more symbiotic relationship between our affiliation and, and there's mm -hmm. just an extra added layer of trust in terms of like my dealings with Brad Pascal and John Scott and Kale and, and all that stuff. So I think it kind of made it more of a linear environment and, and better overall for, for the entire three teams. Um, but then beyond that, like overall, it was just an unbelievable learning experience for me. I kind of, just kind of hit the ground running. I, I had a lot of freedom to do what I wanted to do with the penalty kill. And, and then in terms of working with our defensemen and doing video with guys individually. So that was all really good and really positive, I thought. Um, and then we kind of got into a bit of a, a situation where we just kept getting beat, right? It was, and they weren't pretty losses. Um, we weren't playing great hockey. It was, it was kind of, it, it became a tough working environment and a change was made. And, I don't think anyone was really anticipating a change to come in the way that it did or the manner that it did. Um, but for me, it was an absolute trial by fire type of situation where it was like, all right, you're going to be thrust into this role. Um, here you go. And fortunate enough for me, I was surrounded by people like Brent, people like Lamar, people like Nick Potter, who, who put a lot of faith and trust in me. And then on top of that, um, really were there for me in case I needed anything in terms of the hockey operations uh, side of things. So, so that was great. Stockton was helpful. They sent Thomas Spear down for a little bit to work with our goaltenders and he joined me on the bench for, for a series, which was fantastic as well. Um, mm -hmm. And overall, like I thought we were playing pretty good hockey, especially like when I want to say the first weekend I went one and one and, and, and things were, were pretty good. We were just kind of like going through a lot of emotion at that time and the guys channeled it well. And then we kind of went on a little bit of like, I don't want to say a run, but we played four games and five nights against four different opponents. And it was the uh, wheeling Kalamazoo trip into coming home and then playing uh, Allen in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And like those four games, I wanted to say was like a real turning point for our team. We had by and large what our group was. Um, just in terms of everyone being healthy, um, the guys that were down from Stockton for uh, the predominant amount of the year were down with us during that time. And we played, I want to say four really good games during that stretch. And we were kind of turning a corner, I thought. Um, and then unfortunately we got hit with that flu bug that kind of decimated us for a little bit. And then it was injury after injury. And it was guys that, that we couldn't afford to get injured. It was Dave Jerzinski. It was, it was Charlie O'Connor, who was one of our best penalty killers once he came over from Norfolk. And it just, uh, it became a lot. And, and fortunately, the guys continued to battle. Um, I think most of us would agree that the roster wasn't where it needed to be for us to be as successful as possible. But, um, but overall, like the compete level was there, the effort level was there. And, and by and large, like, 
you can't get upset with any of the guys for the the effort that they were putting forward. So so that was really good to see. And then all of a sudden we we hit coronavirus. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And I mean, you never anticipate like a season ending. It's one of those things where like as long as you're mathematically in, um, yeah. it's one of those situations where you're never fully prepared for the year to end. Um, so it was one of those situations where all of a sudden kind of everyone got, I don't want to say blindsided because once the league started canceling and stuff like that and suspending, you were kind of like, all right, the end is probably near here for us. But, um, but for that extended period of time, it was just, it was a weird limbo. It was a weird mix. It was a tough environment for our guys to be in. Um, kudos to the ownership groups, the board of governors for the ECHL and, and the PHPA to kind of work to a conclusion on how we were supposed to successfully like, or I shouldn't say successfully, but at least end the season on good terms and then mm-hmm. make sure players got home safely to their families right, right away. And, and thank God we did end it when we did because they had the border closure for, for Canada right. and the U S for a little bit there. And, and we were able to get our guys home before all that mess happened. So it was uh there was a lot of moving parts to it. Nick Potter did a phenomenal job setting up exit interviews and and exit physicals for our guys, making sure guys were remaining healthy. And then by and large, it, it all just kind of I mean it, it ended and it was a bit of a whirlwind, but now we're here. So and all hanging out in quarantine doing Zoom meetings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's such a weird place. And I think especially for the season that you kind of just talked me through you know, in that ending month there, end of February, beginning of March, you know, most likely you guys knew that playoffs weren't going to happen, but that was never the attitude in the room. You guys were always going out and playing. I had the chance to, you know, sit down with Brian Lemos uh, the first week of March interviewing him and he was just talking about how, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we're not winning right now, but we're not, giving up you know and so I think that that the culture and the atmosphere was always still to win hockey games and to compete and so kind of still just going through that and then all of a sudden it's stopping I'm sure had to be you know really disappointing for everybody because it was just such an emotional roller coaster ride Mm -hmm. I mean like it's one of those things where I would say most everyone in that room is a group that wanted to see things through regardless of what our ending result was going to be playoffs or not. And so of course it's disappointing the way that it all ends, right? Like, um, you know, it was just, I, de- I know our leaders were definitely bummed out. I know most of our guys were definitely bummed out and, and it was just, it was just a weird limbo. I don't think anyone really knew how to approach the situation as a whole. Um, it was one of those situations where kind of everyone was, was unaccustomed to it and just trying to feel it out as we went along. And, and I think overall, we did a pretty good job with it. Um, you know, it, it kind of just fast forwarded our off season and, and I guess that's okay. It's just, it's just a frustrating way for things to end. Yeah. And do you think, you know, hockey is these guys jobs they show up every day to play the game that they love they show up every day to compete do you think that this situation will maybe how do you think this will affect the players you know when they come back and get to step back onto the ice you know next season do you think that there will be you know a little bit more appreciation that you never know when your season is going to end and I mean I guess there is that kind of you know you never know what's going to happen necessarily with your career but what do you think um is going to result with the players due to this COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, well, I think ideally it it reignites a passion, right? It's one of those situations where you referenced it being a job and livelihood and stuff like that. But I think the most successful teams are the ones that, like, yeah, they view it as a job and their livelihood, but they have a great appreciation for the game and they just love hockey, right? And And I hope that at least for the guys that are coming back to the Mavericks and, and that we bring in this abrupt ending kind of, I don't know, it leaves you somewhat heartbroken. It like you miss the game. And, and I think if you develop that, I don't know, I guess sadness that the game isn't around that all of a sudden, once it's back on your plate and you're allowed to play and you're able to continue play at a professional level, that 
there's there's a genuine excitement about being able to at least like come to the rink every day and hang out in the locker room with the guys and and just love your job right and and it is a job but it's one of those situations where if you're having fun most teams are more successful in that environment so I hope overall it just it creates a more positive environment within the dressing room where where guys are just excited to be there and, and be able to be around each other right Somebody I want to talk about specifically, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier, was, you know, the leaders being pretty bummed. And the leader of this team, the captain, Rocco Carzo, um, announced his retirement recently. Obviously, you're not Rocco, so you can't directly speak for him. But I have to imagine, you know, knowing that that decision was, you know, coming at the end of the season, his I just can't imagine how devastating not knowing that you were playing your last hockey game in a Mavericks jersey happened. What, you know, in the conversations that you've had with him, where is his head at and how did he, you know, handle it so gracefully like he did? Well, I, you know, to be honest with you, like we haven't talked about it a lot with the rock and, and it's one of those situations where I'm sure he's probably still kind of reflecting on everything that happened and all that stuff. But just from my perspective, I think his letter to the fans really summed things up for him. Right. Um, it probably brought a great deal of closure to him, just being able to re like write that and revisit everything just because it was one of those things, like everything happened so abruptly, but it, it allowed him to kind of revisit the last five years and, and really come to grips with what all Kansas city provided for him. And, and it's, it's a sad closing to this chapter, but there's, there's nothing in my mind that says that Rocco Carzo won't be successful going forward and whatever he chooses to do, whether it's his RC four hockey camps or, or just his work in the Kansas city area with junior Mavericks kids and, and youth hockey players. And you just hope that, that he doesn't look back on it with any regret and, and reading that letter and, and seeing what all this community has done for him. I mean, he found his bride to be here and found a second family here and became like almost an unofficial mayor of independence while he was here. Uh, <laughs> I think he'll, uh, I think he'll look back on his time in Kansas city with nothing. I'm sorry. My wife. No, Anyways, you were on a roll there though. That was, I'm sorry to have. Where did I end? And <laughs> um, the the last thing that you were saying is um the last thing that I remember was Rocco being the mayor of Independence. Oh gosh, gotcha. and then and then just and then just ending that off, it's like he's gonna look back at Kansas City as as nothing but an unbelievable life experience for him, and and I hope he sees it that way because he means a lot to this community, he means a lot to the hockey in this area, and. And we should be grateful that he was he was able to stick around here as long as he did. Yeah, perfectly said, even with that little abrupt pause on my <laughs> end. Now, you know, before we kind of close this off, this is such a crazy time and something that nobody has ever really experienced before. What do you think? And like, obviously, as you have mentioned yourself, this was a huge opportunity and just the entire year was a learning experience. What are you taking away from this season, from this COVID-19 situation that's going to catapult you into, you know, seasons to come, you know, and it's going to make you a better coach? Yeah, well, I think, I think there's probably a couple of things that you're really going to take away, or at least I'll really take away is, is one is always develop a plan and be willing to change on the fly. But as long as there's a plan and there's something to fall back on, you can find peace within the chaos. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that's kind of helped me through this last 30 days or however long it's been since Corona kind of hit. And it's just like, as long as there is a sense of normalcy and there is something to fall back on it, it kind of makes your day to day easier to get through. Um, and then beyond that, like, like there's just a gratefulness of being able to work in this environment. You know what I mean? Like it's uh it's tough working from home. It's sad not going into the rink every day and, and seeing your players and seeing your coworkers and, and hopping upstairs to see you guys. So it's uh, it's sad for sure. Um, it makes you miss it. Um, so it's one of those situations where you kind of, you kind of, one hope that all this ends and and 
everything that's going on with COVID-19 kind of comes to a halt and we can continue our, our daily routine, but it also makes you incredibly excited for when the next season starts to get back into that environment right away. And, mm -hmm. and I think hopefully everyone, I mean, from top down within Kansas city has a reignited passion that like things of course didn't end the way that they wanted to this year, but but it gives us a fresh start and it allowed us to give like an extra couple months to kind of build anticipation and excitement for this coming year. And, and I fully expect for us to use that to its fullest potential. Agreed. Um, it will be so exciting to turn that next page and get back uh, into the arena and have our fans be present and have our players be present and just everybody kind of coming back together to enjoy something that everybody in our community is passionate about. Um, Speaking of that passion and those members in our community who play hockey, those youth kiddos who are home now, they, they're not in school. They're, you know, their moms and dads and aunts and uncles, grandma and grandpa, whoever it is, you know, is helping them stay active. It's helping them, uh, you know, with their schoolwork. Do you have any tips or tricks to those kids who are at home who are still wanting to, you know, practice those skills, get better every day? Is there a couple yeah, of things well, that you can tell I, them? I think the number one thing is listen to mom. Um, she knows what's right. But then yeah. uh, going beyond that, like for me, the hockey season's so long at the youth level, right? Like it, it starts with tryouts in August and September, and then it, it just goes and goes and goes. It's almost to the point where it's a 12-month sport. Um, so the biggest advice would be drop the hockey stick and go play tennis or, or do a sport that's like safe social distance wise, like pick up a glove and, and go play with a family member, baseball or throw football around or like create a dynamic sense of your athleticism. Um, and then beyond that, like, I know a few of our guys are working on some videos for us to put out for, for kids to work on in their garage and, but, but the big thing is, is use it as an opportunity to just develop yourself as an athlete, not necessarily a hockey player. You've been working on it for the past, I don't know, six, seven months at this point. So kind of give yourself a break. Use this as an opportunity to get your schoolwork done and learn in a different environment. And then, and then when you do go out for physical activity, don't be afraid to, to try up or pick up another sport. And then like let's face it hockey's going to be back and it's going to be go 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 at that point with hockey it's just the way that the sport works and it's how crazy we are as individuals that love it so so just use this as an opportunity to kind of get away decompress kind of reevaluate what you did this past season see what you kind of need to work on and then once there's a little bit more clarity with what's going on with corona and COVID-19 and and all that good stuff, then, okay, like we can start getting back to the rink and, and working on these things that I kind of feel like I need to work on to get better. Had it perfectly. Hope you kids were taking notes there. That was great <laughs> advice. Seriously. Um, great advice. Great perspective as always. Um, great to have you here kind of just giving us some insight to what it was like for you and what it was like for our players to go through this season and then to obviously experience the end that um, COVID-19 brought upon us. So it has been crazy. It still is every day, but, you know, having these conversations is good and kind of just helps us all realize that one day we will again get to play some Mavericks hockey. So Cole, thank you so much for joining me over Zoom. Once again, I have a way more boring background than you do, but I'll let you have that one. It's all right. You'll get it. You'll get it one day. You'll learn. One day. But thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Great to see you. All right. Have a good one now. Bye. Bye.